Hi, in this video, we're going to do the walkthrough for discriminant analysis and classification that we find in chapter four. This is a follow up on the analysis we did from chapter three, cluster analysis for segmentation, where we're going to take the result of that analysis from chapter three and see whether or not any or some of our descriptors are good at helping us discriminate between some of the different segments. Then we're going, if they are, we're going to then class, use them for classification on a list of prospects to see if we can determine which segment each of the different prospects belong to. So we'll start off right away going into R to run the discriminant analysis and classification. And then we will go over to Tableau where we will visualize some of the results. So to start, when we go over into R, what we're going to do is we're going to open the script that's provided with chapter four. Go into chapter four and open the discriminant script. I like to make my windows a little larger so that I can see. Now, our first step is if there are any packages that we need to load to help us do the analysis, we do that first. Here we see that we do need to load a package called mass. So we're going to go ahead and run this line. Now it will ask us which uh, server we want to download this package from. I'm just going to pick the cloud, but you can pick a server that's close to you. So now it's been downloaded. Next step, we're going to run the library, essentially load the package into R so that we can use it. Now, once you've downloaded the package, you do not need to do that again. Uh, you will, however, every time you open R, start with the load packages and set seed uh, command to make sure it knows the functions you want to use. So we'll go ahead and load the package and set our random number generating seed. So next step we want to do is load in the data. The first data file that we want to load in is the result from our segmentation analysis from chapter three. So we had a file called segmentation result. So we'll go ahead and go, I put that file also in the chapter four folder. So segmentation result. Again, if we want to see some of the data in that file, we can type head, in this case seg, and we see here we've got the segmentation result, including the segment that the customers were assigned to. The second file we want to read in is our classification file. This is a list of prospects where we observe their descriptors, but we don't observe any of their behavior. They're not customers of ours. So we're going to see whether or not we can use the descriptors from our result file to help predict what segment these uh, prospects might be in in our classification file. So this file is called retail classification. And again, if we click over here and type head class, you can see here the prospect number and the different descriptors, married, own a home, household size, income, and age. And we also happen to know their zip code. So the next step is we run the discriminant analysis. So we run the LDA function, which is the uh, linear version of the discriminant analysis. And we're going to do it using segment as our dependent variable. And our independent variables will be the descriptors from the segmentation result file. Then this next row just prints out a summary of our results. So we'll go ahead and highlight this. When we run it, we see here that it ran the, the latent uh, linear discriminant analysis. Uh, it shows us the prior probabilities, essentially the percentage of our customers that are in each of the six segments. It then looks at some, some group means of, of the segments by their descriptors, or by, in this case, by, yeah, by their descriptors. And then these are the uh, different um, discriminant functions. So we can see here the coefficients from these uh, discriminant functions that we'll use. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to take the results of this and we're going to see if 
and how many of these latent discriminant functions are actually significant. If none are significant, it would suggest that we don't have any descriptors that are really good at helping us discriminate among the segments. So for that, we'll highlight this section here, and this will actually print out the results from the five different discriminant functions, and we'll see what we find. You can see it printed out quite a bit of stuff. This is the first discriminant function. It will always, the first function will always be the most significant. And then as you go along, each function is, is less significant than the previous. So we can see our first discriminant function here, significant, right? This, this uh, sort of p-value kind of thing we have here says very significant, three stars. Uh, we see the second one is also very significant. But in fact, the third, the fourth, and the fifth discriminant function are not significant. So not all of our discriminant functions are helpful in discriminating against this, uh, of people in different segments, but it does turn out that we do have some variables, descriptors, that are good at discriminating. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to uh, first check how good our model fit is uh, on our data, and second, classify the prospects into the segments, right? By, by predicting the um, hit rate in sample, what we'll be able to do is to see how good our model is at actually classifying our uh, customers into their segments using just their descriptors. So we're gonna predict using our results of our analysis and what we're going to create is we're going to create a table. This table looks at the predicted versus the actual segment. So obviously the diagonal is something we like because that's a case where we predicted someone was in segment one and they're actually in segment one. So we were right at predicting them 272 times in segment one using their descriptors. Now what we'll do is we'll take the sum of the diagonal, divide it by the sum of the all of the cells, and that'll tell us what percentage of time we were correct. Here we see that we were correct about 65% of the time. Now is 65% a good number? It depends on what your baseline is. Here, if we knew nothing, and we're just flipping coins essentially to put people into groups, given that we have six segments, that would suggest that around 16.6% .6 of the time, we would be right if we guessed at random, right? So certainly 65% is much better than if we were random guessing, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to classify those people in our uh, prospect list using the descriptors and these discriminant functions and then seeing which segment they turn up in. So we'll go ahead and run this here. So we can see here that among all of our prospects, in fact, they get sorted just into three of the six segments. These were sort of our three larger segments. And these were also the, the segments where we had better discriminant variables, essentially descriptors that were good at assigning people to segments. So now we have this prospect list where we have put them into their segments. And what we wanna do next is we're going to actually take this to Tableau and try and visualize some of the results. So first thing we'll do is we'll go back and we'll add this column of predicted uh, segment from our classification. And then we will create a, an, an export of a table in this case, the, we're going to call it classification underscore pred. So here we'll go into chapter four. We're going to create a table called classification.csv. We'll go ahead and create that file. So now we have the file we need to go into Tableau uh, and do some visualization based on this classification. So now let's head over into Tableau. Now to start, we're gonna open that file we just created. So in this case, it's called classification underscore pred. 
And we can see here the data loaded up. We see our prospects, and then we see their predicted segment that they were put in. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to sheet one to begin visualizing. So one thing we could do with this data is we could see how many prospects get sorted into each of the segments, perhaps by zip code here, because we actually do have that zip code data uh, from our uh, prospects. So remember, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell Tableau that our predicted classification of a segment is not a measure. It's actually a dimension that we want to group people by. So we'll right click on this and choose convert to dimension. Next, we'll go ahead and drag this up to columns. So we can see here that the three segments that everyone got sorted into were segments one, two, and four. Now what we want to do is we actually want to just see how many of those people from each of the zip codes actually got sorted into each of the segments. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag zip code over here to rows. You'll see it now creates a row for each person or each zip code. Um, it just puts a text identifier here. If we want to change this so that it actually has uh, the, the number of people from each of the different classifications, what we can do is we can drag predicted class uh, over to text. Now this is just putting the same number of the class. We need to then tell it, we want you to count. So we'll hit the down arrow here, we'll choose measure, count. And now we can see the count of how many people from each of these segments, predicted uh, segments, actually show up in each zip code. So next thing we might want to do is we might want to make this bigger so that we can see it a little bit better. Uh, to do that, we'll go to format font. We'll go ahead and choose, let's say, 16. And bring this over a little bit so it's easier to see. We can also change the name here. So here we might call it number of prospects in each, we'll just say zip. Okay. So now we have um, the number of prospects in each zip. Uh, we can even add because it is also about segments from each sec. There we go. So now we have this information, which might be useful so that we could easily sort by these columns to see which uh, zip codes have these uh, different segments of potential customers from our prospect list. We can also create visualizations using maps with this data. So if we open a second sheet, uh, in this sheet, again, we'll do what we did similar to chapter three. Here we can double click on zip code and this will generate a map for us to show the location of where all these prospects that we have are. Right? Our next step might be to see how many prospects are in each of these zip codes. Right? To do this, we can bring pred class over here to color. Right? Well, we can see here that uh, first it'll tell us where the majority of these people are um uh, based on these colors but if we want we can look at sort of the number of people that come uh so here we can change our measure just to count right and count will tell us how many prospects are in each of the zip codes uh if we want a little more divergence in colors so we can see a little better we go here uh, to the top right and choose edit colors we're going to pick let's say orange blue white diverging this will give us some stark color differences where the darker, almost red color tell us zip codes with few number of prospects. White is sort of in the middle and the dark blue are the areas where we have large numbers of prospects. So what we can do here is we can title this uh, something like heat map of prospects by zip code. Right. 
And now we have a map that sort of helps us identify where we might want to target our efforts in terms of where we'll find larger numbers of prospects. So we'll go ahead and save this Tableau workbook. We're going to save it as a Tableau packaged workbook. And we'll call this uh, discriminant analysis and classification. Now, once we have this information and we decide perhaps which zip codes are, are worth targeting, we can drill into them and see what of the segments are represented by those prospects. And if we go back to our chapter three file, Tableau file that we had called segmentation results, we can look at things like we know that there are segments one, two, and four showing up in our prospect pool. And we can see which zip codes have those and then look at sort of what their profiles mean in terms of their descriptors, as well as looking at their profiles uh, in terms of their bases, which we have in sheet one. 